Um, it is now my great pleasure to introduce Mr. John Fogarty, who will be opening the uh, event. Uh, John Fogarty is Director of Capital Planning at Stony Brook University. Uh, he is responsible for the planning and design management of large capital building and infrastructure projects. Uh, uh, Fogarty graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a master's in architecture. Uh, prior to joining Stony Brook, he worked with major architectural firms and was responsible for capital planning at the University of Chicago. Uh, today, he will be representing the Office of Campus Planning, Design, and Construction, as well as opening today's proceedings, so please uh, welcome him to the podium. Well, thank you. Um, and, and <laughs> is this working for me? Uh, um, let me know if it is. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, yes, I, I have been uh, asked to represent the uh, university administration at this conference. Uh, you know, one of my roles in, in, uh, in capital planning is I, I tend to manage, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, many of the uh, design and, uh, of uh, various buildings on on campus. I've been here this time in my 16th year here, and I've probably been involved with eight or nine buildings, new buildings, and uh, one or two uh, renovations. Um, I, uh, I have to admit that uh, uh, the, the issue of uh, bird-friendly design has not been on the, it's not been the focus of this particular administration, but uh, I can recall uh, you know, when I was in architecture school at the University of Pennsylvania in their, in their new, newly designed for 1972 uh, 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 architecture building, I can remember my first hearing the first bird hit on, on the glass of a, you know, a huge uh, pane of glass, uh, quite striking in terms of its noise. And um, um, it was, the, the glass was surrounded by what architects call a brie soleil, a sunscreen of concrete. And I always wondered if, um, if, if one followed the other in terms of, in terms of causation uh, for that. But um, it is striking that I remember that incident to this day. Um, uh, but uh, in regards to Stony Brook University, um, you know, uh, the, it's probably good to point out that we are a community of, um, on any uh, given day, of over 35,000 people when, when classes are in, uh, that staff, students, hospital personnel, patients, and, and visitors and the like. And we have, um, we have over 127 discrete build, buildings on campus, which represents 12 million gross square feet. So that's an awful lot of glass, and it's an awful lot of glass situations that uh, that may, uh, you know, may be uh, at the heart of uh, of this this particular problem. Um, and because we are a uh, campus that has been assembled and constructed over the last 50 years, we actually have a large inventory of different types of glass uh, from the. You know, from the early uh, buildings, which were single pane glass of, uh, of uh, shall we say, ordinary composition, um, to um, to other types of glass. And for example, in the 70s, in, in response to in response to uh, energy conservation and concerns, the the introduction of reflective glass, uh, you know, came into play, and. Um, and uh, by adding reflective films to the glass, and so suddenly there was a whole generation of buildings done with bronze, rose-colored, and probably the worst were the gold reflective glass uh, buildings that you saw, particularly in the in the south. Um, and um, uh, for example, if you look at the physics building today, you'll find on three sides of the building, um, the, uh, the you know the glass appears to have a reflective surface, and on the north side of the building, it appears to be clear, um, and that was a uh, that was a response to um, uh, you know generally to uh, energy conservation. Now, in the next uh, um, in the next over the next decades, uh, people got more sophisticated about about glass. Um, in terms
terms of its design, and I think uh, if our, our friend from Guardian Glass will probably tell us uh, uh, you know, more, about, more about that process. Um, there, there has also been a, a move, in, in my experience, from away from the looks of reflective glass to um, what, you know, uh, what you might consider more human-friendly, uh, which is, uh, is glass that still has all the same um, energy-conserving uh, capabilities um, as, um, as these, these early reflective uh, glass uh, items to what they now call a low-E glass, which paradoxically um, tries to appear to be completely clear glass, but at the same time um, uh, uh, reflects a, um, uh, a certain amount of, actually a very high amount of the ultraviolet and the infrared light to keep it from coming in the buildings. And so, you know, the industry has made great strides in this direction. And quite frankly, as a university, what, are, what is our directive by the state, by the, uh, by the SUNY system? We are now, um, you know, we're, we're asked to reduce energy consumption now, with our new chancellor's directive, we're asked to uh, look into uh, net zero carbon uh, as, as we do, do new buildings. So our, um, what we need to do is we need to increase our efforts uh, you know, to deal with these, these uh, energy situations. But at the same time, I wonder, uh, has these improvements in the glazing technology of the last 20 years, have they made the bird impact and the bird strike problem worse. And it's issues like that that I'd like to learn about from this con conference. So on behalf of the administration, I'd like to thank you all for being here. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say and looking for solutions for this particular problem. Thank you.